Welcome to... If Grand Turismo and Polyphony Digital should do like iRacing and their company's doing, and get official racing licenses using their video game during coronavirus. As I'm sure y'all know, NASCAR is using iRacing as a platform to do its racing during the coronavirus pandemic. And the way that works is to get as many actual NASCAR drivers that want to do it, run iRacing during the same time that a regular race would be held during normal circumstances. And sometimes the races are changed around, like last week NASCAR ran Monza, which obviously doesn't happen in real life, but I consider that more positive. But this isn't as much about the iRacing side of it as comparing it to the Gran Turismo side of it, which is more of my expertise. This particular video isn't really showing anything. I just have this on screen because it's easy enough to get. It's what NASCAR is going to do. Their next race is going to be where you can see it at Richmond on Saturday of the time of recording this video, obviously. And that's cool that NASCAR has iRacing because iRacing is a nice simulation and stuff. But here's the start of the argument of whether Gran Turismo should or shouldn't get it. I say this right now when I do the argument, I'm not directly saying anything about Kyle Larson. Just, no, no, not going that route. So, to get into it, an argument for Gran Turismo getting actual racing series to use its video game is simply, there's a lot of racing series in the video game. Like iRacing, it makes sense to get NASCAR because there's NASCARs and iRacing. And obviously, they're not going to use NASCAR Heat 4 officially because, well, the game's terrible. There is apparently a eSports series in NASCAR Heat 4, but it's like there's eSports in NBA 2K. This, those two games aren't simulation. And get, there can be eSports without a simulation game. I mean, look at Fortnite and such. But I would consider Gran Turismo's to count as simulation, or at least about the best you're going to get on consoles. And well, things that Gran Turismo can simulate, because they already have them, would be along the lines of Super GT500s, the Formula cars that have been added recently, the ones that are the Honda and Toyota. Le Mans, to an extent, but they don't have every one of the newest models and such. Granted, they don't really for Super GT 500s either, but I would assume that would be a cheaper license to add than Le Mans. And, of course, there's also the issue with Le Mans in that there's tons of different classes of it. In Super GT, there's just 300 and 500. I would assume the money would be more on the 500 side in terms of getting drivers to do the races. So, I think that would definitely be a positive gr of Gran Turismo's. There's already some basis to build upon. Granted, I can't name one Super GT 500 driver, but I'm sure there's a lot of people worldwide who can't. So, I'm sure there could be money to be made there and overall benefiting the community as well because it's something to watch during all this. All in all, I think that's the main reason NASCAR is doing this is not even necessarily directly for the money. Of course, the money helps, but... It's to keep the fans on board. It's to have the fans something to watch. If the fans get bored, they might not come back. If they give them something to watch, they'll come back later. But it is somewhat about money. Well, they're doing it first for entertainment. Give the fans entertainment so that way they can keep their money later on. I know that still sounds kind of bad saying it, but let's face it, it's still all in all about money, no matter the circumstances. And it's also another positive of Gran Turismo. Gran Turismo has been proven to make a good bit of money, granted the actual amounts aren't known. But still, it's obviously a profit, doing what it's already already have done with GT Academy, that was so popular it got on TV. And now the Gran Turismo FIA Cups, that get seen by over a million people over all the social media platforms it's on. Now, and in the future most likely, I would assume it would come back whether Gran Turismo gets real racing drivers to do some things or not. Gran Turismo has proved to be successful 
with simulation to become real world. It's been proven in GT Academy, and supposedly there was a thing when GT Sport was coming out that the people who won the FI Cups would get a real world racing license. I don't really know what happened there. I mean, I don't really think the stipulations to get some type of real world racing license is really all that hard. You see a lot of YouTubers do it now. So I don't know why that's such a big issue. I mean, that... I'll say this, there's a lot of YouTubers who are slower in Gran Turismo that got real world racing licenses since the FI Cups have came out. I'll, I'll say that. Top drivers in Gran Turismo were faster than them at Gran Turismo. And that's another point, too, that could actually be a positive depending on how you spin it. In NASCAR, sometimes you get the actual iRacing folks racing against real world racing drivers as well. And while sometimes that can lead to controversy, a lot of the time it leads to nice toe-to-toe -to -toe really close racing. Like Darren Earnhardt Jr. is just as fast on a good day as the people who race in iRacing and not NASCAR. So that's nice to see. And I think to an extent this could happen in Gran Turismo as well. Because the best of the best are obviously going to be good on every track. But here's something else that could be done. Instead of maybe having the best of the best, I guess you could do that as well. But to make the racing closer, you could do like what Jimmy Broadbent and Super GT and such are doing in other games and do it with Gran Turismo. Have the influencers of Gran Turismo race the real world drivers. So that way you have people who are elite in their main series versus players in Gran Turismo who are great in, well, Gran Turismo. So you'd think the least elite drivers would at least still be great driving their own cars in the video game. And obviously the drivers who are great in Gran Turismo would still be great again against the very best. Granted, and again, it wouldn't be straight up elite side-by-side -side racing in sets like you would get in iRacing. But it would still be close racing. And all in all, I think that's the more important part. As long as the racing is close, casual viewers aren't really going to realize that they might be one second off the very top of the top in the world. Maybe. And again, I guess you could have the top of the top race as well. Maybe you could do some sort of handicap thing. Their car has 50 less horsepower. They start in the back when the rear world race car drivers start in the front. You could do something like that, but it might cause a bit more chaos and such. But speaking of chaos and such, now this gets more into the negatives. Because all in all, the main positives are Gran Turismo is popular and proven to make money. There's already an audience there. And I do think that the racing could be close, plus there's already a platform in which it could be built upon. The negative to start out with, though, is that people are mixed about iRacing being true simulation racing. Is it too serious? Is it not quite like the real thing? There's a mixed bag of people on both sides of it. Gran Turismo is just pretty much undisputedly considered less simulation than iRacing, but PD themselves consider Gran Turismo as extremely simulation. I think really PD made Gran Turismo Sport to essentially be a console version of iRacing. I don't think they even meant it as a direct competitor to like Project Cars 2 or something. They meant it as a console way to get iRacing. So, take that as you may, but still, even people who are mainly fans of Gran Turismo would even say that iRacing, for the most part, is a more of simulation value. Granted, one of the main complaints of iRacing right now using NASCAR on its platform is the racing is actually too serious. So sometimes it overall makes people getting mad of things that aren't worth getting mad about, or blah blah blah. Or, of course, with the things that happen with individual drivers, you could there's plenty of arguments of the other way, too. The driver's not taking it serious enough. But here is my argument for Gran Turismo. While all in all, it is still negative, it's been proven that Gran Turismo will go for the non-serious route, even promoting their game as serious. Like, PD themselves coined Gran Turismo Sport as burn it to the ground. But then yet, we still have the Samba bus. And we still have all the wacky Vision GT cars. And even the final race in every FIA Cup is Red Bulls at a track. Red Bulls are not real. Granted, I bet that's a contractual obligation. I guarantee Red Bull pays to have that be the final race. But then again, that can go actually somewhat in a positive as there's money making there. 
Maybe the final race could also be Red Bulls for something like that. Like, let's say maybe this is pushing it, but let's say we get, like, Red Bull drivers from all across all their realms, whether it be Rally or F1 or whatever, compete with the Red Bull cars that are already in Gran Turismo. That could maybe be a positive. But the real negative from this is simply... NASCAR and iRacing is getting a lot of controversy for a lot of different issues. Again, I already said it earlier about the one issue I'm not going to directly address. But if iRacing is getting that much controversy and it's kind of just now getting into the spotlight, Gran Turismo that's been popular for 20 years and already has its fair share of controversy would only get that much more. For better or worse, to be fair, sometimes all publicity is good publicity, but... In the long run, it might be worse, because one of the things people are sort of already predicting with iRacing is that it's going to get so many people playing the game now that it creates a lot of controversy and just the competitive aspect of it. People wanting to be competitive that just simply aren't good at the game, they get mad and then they don't come back. And while they are there for a short period of time, they annoy the people who have played the game so much because it's a whole new crowd coming in that it makes the people who are already there not going to want to come back because they get annoyed with the new people. And thus, over time, there actually ends up being less people than there would have been before all this started out. Even a bigger problem with Gran Turismo is there's simply just not all that much people to begin with. There's only in the tens of thousands of people who play GT on a weekly basis now, as you can see from how many people do the weekly races and the time trials. GT Sport supposedly sold 8 million copies or so. Again, that still hasn't been proven. But nonetheless, many millions of copies to only tens of thousands of people playing ain't the best ratio. And would it go down if they had Railroad Drivers Race? I would say initially it would go up slightly like it is doing with iRacing, but yes, it will go down. Whether that's directly because of the iRacing situation that people are predicting is going to happen, or it's just the game is older by that point, it's probably some of both, really. So is it worth the investment now when it might not even really pay off later? Honestly, more than anything, I think that depends on the loyalty of the drivers and the racing series. Most people are predicting with iRacing is that once NASCAR starts back up for real, NASCAR is going to forget iRacing and just move on. Nothing's official of that either way, whether they will or won't continue. But nonetheless, the drivers might not continue in iRacing. They might not continue as much in iRacing even now, because again, the controversies I said I'm not going to bring up. Which is logical... The drivers wouldn't want to continue after that. It's logical that sponsors aren't continuing after that, all that. But granted, that could lead into something that's a gray area. I don't really know if it's positive or negative. That'll kind of end on this. iRacing is getting so much controversy that some sponsors might actually want to move to a new game. Could Gran Turismo be that new game? Well, this is really the gray area. Would PD even want those sponsors to begin with? Because there's already been controversies in the past. Blue Moon and such. And also, I mean, this is the most serious bit of the video. More than anything, all this came about of keeping people safe and entertained. Can PD run all this while still keeping up with social distancing? While still keeping everyone involved safe? And still putting on a good enough product that people actually want to see and they can make money from. That's the big gray area. That's what I truly don't know. I mean, I can predict all the things that I do know about, like just simply how many cars are in Gran Turismo and how that can relate to Red World Series. How good of the physics are of Gran Turismo compared to Project Cars and the iRacing and all competitors, whether direct or indirect and all that, but... I simply don't know if PD would be capable of doing this or not. Granted, I don't think they would have to change up their format too much more than just what they do for weekly races. Because they already have things where they have F1 drivers and such play the video game. And do it like that. Like they've had some F1 drivers do it. They had Jimmy Broadbent do it. And then they just put that on Grand Turismo TV. I would assume essentially to have the real world drivers do it if they can get them to do it. It would just be that times 16 or whatever. 
or do whatever format they do to set up it for one driver. They just do that with 16 drivers and then they all go into a private lobby and do a race like that. I guess that would work. I'm not involved in that sort of thing of how to set it up, but it makes sense that they would work. But again, that's really on PD. I don't know exactly. So whether it does or doesn't, I'm not going to be mad at PD either way. Because more than anything, it's about keeping people safe. Don't risk anybody's safety to do all this. Well, it's great if we could have this entertainment and no matter how successful it ends up turning out, it's better than nothing. If it ends up not being the safest thing to do, then obviously don't do it. Oh, no, I think that if it is possible to do, there's more positives than negatives if PD tries to do it. Because let's face it, this Gran Turismo is still more popular than iRacing, even at iRacing's most popular bit and Gran Turismo kind of on a downturn in general. But, iRacing has its fair share of controversies now. Gran Turismo has always had its fair share of controversies and would even bring it even more. So, more than anything, it would depend on PD whether it happens or not. All in all, I would still say the racing that has happened in the NASCAR iRacing series has been successful. The racing itself is good. The other things, you can make your own argument on that. But, the racing has been good. I'm not really going to go in too much in this video if, like, drivers should be mic'd up when they do the racing in Gran Turismo because various issues. I don't know. I would say probably not. Few drivers would be of different languages they speak. So it would be somewhat confusing to viewers who only know one language. But who knows on that and there's also many other issues of how they would actually go about getting the drivers the software and such to be able to do this. And just getting drivers first and foremost might be an issue. I don't really know about that. But again, to end off, more than anything, just stay safe and make sure whether this does or doesn't happen, whatever protocol to get done with that keeps people safe. Of course, keep, pe keeping people entertained is very much an important part. But throughout all this, safety is the main issue. I get there's other government-type issues like being able to keep people employed, being able to keep people in the housing, being able to keep people fed and clean water, shelter, all that. But this being more about the entertainment aspect, while it is worth doing a video for, I mean, this may not, not do anything, let's be real. But, it's still worth bringing up too, because despite the main concern being health and safety of people, and another big concern being monetary, entertainment can still happen during these times, and if there is a way to make this happen, I think that overall, it would be positive as long as it can be done in a safe way. And, let's put it this way, let's say this fails anyway. At least now, it's known. I say better to go ahead and attempt it now, when there's more of a market for people to view it than later on, when it could end up as a bigger failure when there's less people that would be watching anyway. Again, only attempt it if it's safe, but I think that overall now would be the best time to do it if it is possible. Granted, of course, it's not the best circumstances to make this the best time. But with more people watching online than ever, technically speaking, it is the best time. Just with the worst circumstances to make it so. But in these bad circumstances, this could be a way to make things a little bit better. If it is possible to do. And if it is possible to do, then I think that overall, it would be worth a yee -haw.